My name's Paul Farrelly. I'm a English editor here at ERNLO magazine, and today I'm going to talk about my experiences in higher education in Australia. I'll be drawing upon two particular experiences. First was as an undergraduate between uh, 1997 and 2001, and the second was as a postgraduate um, in a master's program between uh, 2007 and 2008. There's three particular things I'd like to talk about. The first is the role of information technology um, in my experience as a student. Uh, the second is about student life in general. And the third is some of the skills I think I picked up at university and how it prepared me for uh, the workforce and life as a graduate. I guess this is all anecdotal, what I'm going to be saying. There's nothing particularly empirical about it, but it's based on my experiences. Um, in 1997, when I went to university for the first time, uh, the internet was pretty new. We didn't have the internet at home. I'd only ever used it uh, twice before, and all of a sudden I was at a place where the internet was um, easily accessible. Uh, however, at that stage, the internet wasn't really used that much um, for us as you know, first and early year students, we didn't use the internet in, for research much at all. We didn't, uh, we, we sent emails to each other, but our teachers, our lecturers and our tutors didn't uh, communicate to us using email. Um, so I guess the internet was a bit wild at that stage. It hadn't been perhaps um, formalized as much as it had in later years. Uh, you know, there was a lot of stuff, you could get a lot of information off the internet, but basically uh, the idea was, uh, if it's on the internet, it's probably uh, crap, so don't put too much uh, emphasis on it. So I don't know how many students actually use the internet as a, a source back then. However, by the time 2007 came around and I was back at university, um, the internet had changed, um, in particular the role in it. The internet's role in the lives of students was uh, significantly different. Um, lectures were all being recorded and instead of being on a tape in the library that you had to go and borrow and if someone else was listening to it, you couldn't listen to it, you could download uh, MP3s of your, of your lectures and um, all sorts of lecture material were up online, overhead um, uh, PowerPoint presentations, uh, notes, suggested readings, links, uh, MP3s, videos, all that sort of stuff was put online by um, uh, lecturers to some degree or another. Some are more uh, technology savvy than others. Others um, sort of even refusing to uh, uh, take um, lectures. That gets into my other point though. But I think um, the other big thing about the internet in 2007, and I guess going on to this current age, is that the students at university who are writing assignments, preparing presentations, studying for tests, have grown up using the internet, and they're much more familiar with it. And they're in in doing that, they're using the internet as opposed to perhaps traditional credible sources such as um, peer-reviewed peer journals or um, books that are put out by respected uh, publishing houses. And in perhaps um, preferring internet-based sources over these more reliable sources, uh, they're compromising, I guess, the um, what, what they're, they're learning. They could be sort of relying on unchecked facts as opposed to established uh, knowledge. And I think it's something that uh, teachers, lecturers, tutors are having to be much more uh, vigilant on looking for um, stuff that assignments have been plagiarized um, or uh, other bits of information that's been stolen from one place or another. So I think the potential for the internet's offered great potential for students um, and continues to do so. However, naturally, it also brings a whole new set of risks. Um, however, I found that as a student, uh, having the internet was much better than not having the internet. Um, the second thing I wanted to talk about was um, student life. 
Uh, in Australia, traditionally, students had to pay a student services fee, a student, it was called voluntary student, um, it, was, it was called student unionism. And that meant that students paid a certain amount, a few hundred dollars each year to the university, and that money was used to uh, fund various services such as um, subsidised uh, food from cafeterias as well as clubs, uh, sporting clubs, uh, political clubs, special interest clubs. Um, and this, uh, this was... Uh, student unionism became voluntary, um, I don't know, maybe five, four or five years ago. And I noticed on my campus that in the aftermath of student unionism, um, of voluntary student unionism, activities, general sorts of activities around the, the campus seem to be less, the campus seem to be a bit less um, vibrant a place as a result of it. And uh, that's quite unfortunate because I think uh, these clubs can offer a, gr a great deal to students, a great way to meet people, to be exposed to new ideas, to, to learn new things and you know, have a, a really good time. And with their funding source being undermined, because of voluntary student unionism, I think that's a great shame. I guess the argument is, well, um, people shouldn't be forced to pay for clubs that they might not participate in. But uh, I think it's it's a relatively small amount of money, and that if everyone's paying it and that money's going into the student union system, then it's going to um, to benefit everyone, all students in the long run, whether or not they participate in. Uh, the activities or not. Another thing I noticed that was different between uh, the late 90s and 10 years down the track at the university was the um, amount of time students spent in lectures. It seemed to me that uh, ten year, in, in 2007-2008 students were much more inclined to uh, not go to class to their lectures, um, particularly for the purposes of work. They were having to to work a lot more um, in part-time jobs in order to get money in to help them pay the rent, um, buy their food, that sort of thing. Uh, whereas in, in the late 90s, students, based on my friends, people I hung out with, and my own experiences, were working fewer, uh, working fewer hours in a part-time job and generally a bit more willing to go to lectures. Of course, it wasn't perfect, but most students went to lectures most of the time. Another difference in the student life between uh, 1996 and 2007, or 1997 and 2007, um, in so far as the students uh, were not going to lectures as much, was a greater reliance upon uh, lectures being taped, uh, study materials being available online. And uh, this is something that's much more easily done now with the internet. However, some lecturers uh, would refuse to, to tape lectures uh, and put them online because they would argue that in doing that, they're encouraging students not to show up to the lecture in the first place, which I think is a, uh, a fairly uh, fraught sort of argument because there's all sorts of reasons why students can't come to lectures, whether or not they're sick that day, uh, whether or not uh, their friend is sick, whether or not their car breaks down on the way to class. There's a whole bunch of reasons why a student can't make a lecture. And I think that those who can't, generally, can't genuinely attend a lecture should not be punished by having that lecture not being available online because some students might choose not to attend a lecture simply because they can download the version uh, online. The last thing I'd like to talk about is my, uh, my own um, things, uh, skills I might have picked up in university that have helped me down the track uh, above and beyond any sort of intellectual knowledge I might have uh, managed to, to pick up. Um, a few things come to mind. I guess when I was, I studied uh, in the commerce faculty for a couple of years and one of the Probably the best thing I got out of that faculty was um, there was a lot of reliance upon group assignments, and I think that was a real strong point. Um, getting together in a group, often with uh, one or two members who you didn't know, uh, complete strangers, and having to do an assignment, uh, put together a presentation, um, which would take several weeks, 
And that was a really useful experience in uh, negotiating with other people who have different points of view to yourself, meeting deadlines, um, having to deal with people who don't pull their weight, which is invariably um, the case in every assignment. So that was a really practical sort of skill that I found myself um, drawing upon in my early years in the workforce. Um, in uh, the arts faculty, you do a huge amount of reading and have to, um, I guess, use that as a source for putting together some sort of article or, or um, essay. And I found that just the, particularly at, at ANU, the Australian National University where I was, the, the standard was reasonably high and they expected um, if you wanted to get a decent mark, you really had to read widely and you had to take um, what you'd read and uh, put it in an essay in a way that was clear, uh, without waffle, without any sort of um, misrepresentation. And, and those sort of skills I found uh, valued quite highly by my bosses in the years um, following graduation and skills that whilst I don't think I've mastered them, I think they um, put me in, uh, in good stead once I got into the workforce.